Uh, th thanks, David. Uh, we're looking at the innovation of specialisations uh, within primary PSTs as one part of a very large range of programs. Uh, we're well aware there's some controversy about specialists, and we hope that today is a chance to talk further about this, to get your views in the panel. Uh, what, is, what should the role of a specialist be? Uh, are they the best way to advance science in primary schools? And uh, we know that being a peer, a coach of your peers, is quite a challenge. I think it can be a challenge in a primary school, it can be a challenge in a secondary school. We need to think about, well, what are the possibilities of this coach within the school uh, approach? Just to uh, repeat what Russell said, but I think to point to what are the, what's really interesting about this program and what all the challenges are, the major premise, as Russell said, is that simple sentence. Some of you may not even agree with this as the major premise for what should happen to improve science and maths, but we want you to be really clear, this is what the whole program is attempting. And clearly, there are a lot of assumptions in that statement. Uh, the first line highlights a very broad problem that we all know about. Some of us a couple of weeks ago were at a very dispiriting talk by Peter Fencham about all the attempts to reform science over the last 30 years and none of them worked. Uh, and he had an explanation. They were too ambitious. If you try too many things at once, uh, teachers will under stress default to no, uh, traditional practice. And so uh, we heard all about that. Another speaker from the England announced that kids are bored with numbers by the time they hit prep. And he also had figures about declining enrolments in maths, primary, secondary, and even tertiary. They can't, even people who've got to tertiary can't hold in the course and stay interested. So uh, we've had many attempts at reform. Uh, over the last 30 years. We're all aware of the usual problems, insufficient uh, support, trying too many things at once. I think we can all agree there is a problem uh, and we're, going, we're looking now at the primary, uh, at the attempt to improve science in primary schools. Uh, one of the big attempts in our country over the last 15 years has been primary connections and it was very interesting to hear Keith Scamp's report which said primary teachers love they love to work with all the activities, but they never get round to the hard bit of the kids having to represent their understandings. So often the, the units would run out before it got to the part where there could really be a payoff in learning. That learning does involve uh, representational understanding, being able to understand the reps of others, create your own reps to make claims about scientific ideas. Meaningful engagement. We all know the incredibly busy demands of a pre-service course. We all know uh, that the lives of pre-service teachers are incredibly complex as they juggle many things. And here we are saying that it's possible to establish meaningful engagement with real science practices and processes in this very busy time. We've already heard that science too isn't a singular thing. There are so many different practices that come under this banner and then it's interesting to think about if we're trying to connect uh, primary teachers with science, what, would sh what should count? What would prove you've really been rem-stepped uh, if you have had sufficient exposure to contemporary science practice in its many different forms? At the last conference we heard some people saying, you seem to be keen about discovery science, the latest inventions, but what about applied science to all the social problems we've got? That all, it would be good for primary teachers to have uh, students to have exposure to that too. So, and we have many conversations about this in Central Branch. What do we mean by reconceptualising? Uh, of science and maths in schools. Uh, what do we mean by uh, the? What do we mean by this process? And so, I'd like to suggest that when we're thinking about reconceptualising, we are really thinking about changing the mindset, the understandings, the beliefs of the beginning teachers. 
and we're kind of in the background trying to hyper-design possible ways for this to happen. The question, the question then is, what will actually count as enrichment? What do the scientists bring? Is any scientist appropriate for this process? And we'll hear more about this in subsequent uh, uh, presentations. What exactly, what exactly is the contribution? How can it be marshaled? How can we understand it? How can we package it? How can we upscale that there is, in fact, a rich interaction between uh, the two groups? So, we're reporting of th after three years of trying to find out answers to these questions. And I think the first point is, as you've heard already, all of us have learned an incredible lot. Uh, some of us are not normally accustomed to talking to physics lecturers, if we're in teacher ed, and we've had to learn a whole new vocabulary. When we say curriculum, it doesn't quite mean the same as someone working in a faculty of science and you really have to negotiate what that means. We also have to understand what context means. We, as teacher educators, we have highly developed notions of context, meaning what kids are ready for, what kids will come at, what kids will be engaged with. And if there's going to be a, a successful connection between the working of current scientists and primary schools, then the scientists need to be sensitised to what does context really mean uh, for teachers, rather than assuming uh, enthusiasm will carry the day. The challenges, I'm sure you'll hear many of these today, the challenges are time. Most of the program has worked on volunteerism, the goodwill of science, scientists in many different contexts, and the goodwill of teacher educators. So that raises questions about sustainability and what's possible. Uh, as always, the challenge, we heard it a bit from the keynote speaker, it's about fit for purpose. How do you get an exact fit for purpose between the excitement of what scientists are doing in, in uh, teams with work that is manageable, adjustable to a prescribed curriculum in schools? And this poses uh, significant challenges around alignment. We're going to hear from three programs. Uh, well, two programs based in Bendigo and one program based at uh, Melbourne Uni. So two in a regional uh, context, one a metro. I think it does suggest a proof of concept when we hear what these speakers have to say. And I'm very pleased now to hand over to our first speaker, Peter Cox. This changeover will take a couple of minutes from the Mac to the sorry to the Mac. So uh, just talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Turn to the person next to you and say something. I think we're ready. So you can stop talking meaningfully to each other now. And uh, I'll try to share some of the stuff from the 
Bendigo campus of La Trobe, Bendigo. And it's nice to see some friendly faces in the audience. So the, um, the aim with this is to talk about two separate initiatives that we, or two separate REMSTEP initiatives, uh, in the second and third year parts of our B.Ed. program. So both primary Bachelor of Education uh, subjects. The one that I'm going to speak about first is, we call it MISTI affectionately, it's the Multidisciplinary Science and Technology Integrated Experience. Now remember those words, I'm sure you won't, but when we play a little movie in a minute with David in it, he doesn't even say it right, so we'll read him later on about that. Uh, that's with our third year Bachelor of Education students and that, um, that trial has been running for three years. And there's a bit, been a bit of a learning journey from 2014 through to 2016 with uh, how we could run working with real life scientists with our Bachelor of Ed students. And that was with volunteers from our program, so it wasn't the entire year level. The second initiative we affectionately call LTDSI, don't know why, but uh, it's between the Discovery Science Centre in Bendigo which is a small science centre, a bit like science works in the way it works. Um, and that was working with our second year Bachelor of Education students only this year. The interesting thing is that was with the entire cohort, so it was 160 pre-service teachers involved with that one. But let's start with um, the MISTI, the third year program. And just remember that with, with these trials, it was really a conscious enrichment of existing programs that we were looking at. So not rewriting the entire uh, Bachelor of Ed Science program, but we're attempting in all cases to add practical experiences and to connect our PSTs with uh, real live scientists in meaningful ways too. So, come on little, well, this is good, there we go. Um, Misty, I'll just have to explain it. So this slide is just gonna give me a, a little a uh, few points to try to give you a sense of what MISTI is all about. It's a, uh, a piece of assessment that involves problem-based learning and team teaching. So our pre-service teachers are in teams of two for the entire semester. And the problem they're given at the start, this is not written for them though, is to address the need for more graduates from STEM courses, we need to engage primary school students in STEM. And in teams of two, the pre-service teachers cooperatively design, plan, teach and evaluate a STEM unit as a part of a practicum placement. Now, it's a complex task for them to do in one semester when it's a three-week STEM unit. That's why we put them in pairs, teams of two. The MISTI is not just within the science subject though. It counts for 70% of the science subject in terms of assessment and it's 40% of the design and technology subject that also runs at the same time. And as well as that, it forms a large component of their three week professional experience placement. So it's a big beast for them to tackle and it's just as well they've got a hand to hold because the requirements of doing all of that uh, and delivering a very engaging integrated unit is something that we wouldn't like to see them do on their own. Uh, anyway, so they're ready for the challenge though by the end of third year. So this is second semester, third year. And what we have running in the science subject called integrated science learning and in the design and tech is that the material that we're covering is immediately applied by the pre-service teachers in their units. So the material we're talking about in terms of teaching science is applied immediately by them co-constructing. And every week of science, for example, there's a challenge. And the challenge is to try to incorporate particular things within their unit they're planning. All those challenges are outlined at the start though. It's not, oh, week nine, oh my God, we've got to rewrite for this challenge. So they know all the challenges ahead of time. So, to, um, to give you a snippet, uh, perhaps a, a sense of MISTI, I couldn't march my students down, but what they have to do as part of MISTI at the end is we have a forum presentation and in teams of two, they have eight minutes to give us a very quick overview, a bit like a professional development session, of their MISTI unit. And so people come in for half a day 
and present in that half day and see half of, their, half of the course peers presenting on it. And it runs over a day, but they only come for half, if that makes sense, and present in that half day, if that makes any sense. So you're going to see me uh, not pulling a student up on stage, unfortunately, but pull a student's uh, account of uh, their MISTI experience. And to start, to start, if my Mac will behave, this is um, one group who was at, a, uh, at Kerrang South. And this is part of their introduction, just the overview that they have to present as part of their presentation. Not all students do it as a movie, but the forum presentations being a timed eight minute thing, the high achieving students and others really like to make sure that they deliver all of the things they're supposed to in the eight minutes. And so we have many movies. Uh, and so it's quite handy. Here's some live students speaking about the start. If it works. Let's go to full screen. Hey, where's my full screen on this? Oh, there it is. Is it too loud? Start talking. On the 3rd of October, we began our MISTI placement. With plenty of unit planning and six school visits prior to placement, we were eager and excited to begin. Our MISTI placement was at the Kerrang South Primary School, and we had the pleasure of teaching Grade 3 students. Our science topic for the program was forces and was based around the five E's teaching and learning model. The five E's being engage, explore, explain, elaborate and evaluate. Throughout the forces unit, which was made up of 13 one hour lessons, we were able to teach students about the forces around us by including many hands on activities. We also integrated different subject disciplines into each lesson, such as mathematics, English and design and technology. So that's a part of their introduction only um, and they have to, as a further part, share a duel which is approximately a quick two minute to three minute professional development session about something that really worked as a part of their unit to share the best ideas and practices. Now this group will show their duel in a minute but if I just get out of this and embarrass David Oh, well, they all know what MISTI stands for now, David. <laughs> and we'll just play David here. Don't, don't worry about what he says, though. It's, uh, sorry, about MISTI in terms of it, what it stands for. But let's just have David 321. Should be David about there. There are a lot of interesting things happening in primary education and um, teacher training already in La Trobe University, in particular in the regions. And there's one in particular which is called MISTI, which is Multidisciplinary Science Teacher Integration Education. And it forms part of the teacher training for primary teachers. Now we saw an opportunity here for engaging the pre-service teachers with practicing research scientists. Olivia and myself have been working with U1 uh, students at Girton Grammar, and we have been focusing on physical and chemical change. We asked David to come to Bendigo to help us with the liquid nitrogen. Because we were so involved with making crystals, we also told them that that was his specialty. So that really guided some of our questions. So how did the crystals form? That's the question. For children to see a real live scientist in operation has been a wonderful experience for them and it has further expanded and consolidated their understanding of the topic that we're studying. So that's, um, that's a sense of how we kicked REMSTEP into the existing MISTI program. That the pre-service teachers, depending on their topic and their needs, could hook up with a scientist and use them in various ways. And one of the ways, of course, of course was an incursion. Also, as someone who has a wealth of knowledge about science, our pre-service teachers, of course, are less confident they certainly know what they're doing with teaching at the end of third year, uh, but science is still one of those things that they're a little um, less confident about. So teaming up with a scientist is a way they see as getting a wealth of knowledge and skills, an incursion, and possibly materials. And so REMSTEP was able to provide materials, as you'll see. So what I will do is kick back to that jewel from those people at Kerrang South, and we'll just watch their jewel before I go any further. You are, oh, oh, oh. 
The jewel that we would highly recommend after completing our MISTI program would be an incursion from the REMSTEP program. As we were located in the small country town of Karain, it was made aware to us that an excursion to the Bendigo Discovery Centre or anywhere else was not a viable option. However, we were able to get in touch with Nick Tran, a scientist from the program. He was more than happy to travel to our school and conduct a lesson on magnets. The students were extremely excited when they heard a real life scientist was coming to teach them. Nick's ability to explain magnets and how they relate to force was very beneficial for all of the students. Perhaps the best part of, about the REMSTEP program is that they can provide all, all the materials needed for the lesson. This meant that every student had their own magnet which made the lesson engaging for all involved. We cannot thank Nick enough for his professionalism and willingness, willingness to connect with the students. Well, you won't play Asher just yet. So, kicking back to the PowerPoint for a minute. So, now I hope you've got a sense of MISTI and how we were linking uh, MISTI into REMSTEP. In 2014, we only had 10 pre-service teachers involved, so it was a small pilot. And then it grew. In 2015, we had 14 and then 21. The one wasn't in a team. That's Asher, actually, the next uh, movie I'm going to show you. So we had 10 teams and Asher on her own. And she really felt she needed a scientist when she was doing MISTI on her own. We do modify the requirements for a single person. And that's because she had to be in a particular area at a particular time. So um, the, that, that jewel that you've just seen from uh, Kerrang South, for a small rural primary school to have a scientist to come in it has massive novelty value. And a lot of these children, even in Bendigo, believe they've never seen a real scientist. And so it, it makes it incredibly meaningful in the units that our pre-service teachers are delivering to have such an enriching incursion as a part of their unit. So we do encourage incursions or excursions as one of the challenges for them in their MISTI unit. And lots of people, lots of the pre-service teachers that used uh, a REM step scientist created an incursion as opposed to a, an excursion. And they were very successful, all of them. So, uh, without further ado, let's just have a look at Asha and we'll run through a, a snippet of her overview where she's talking about a part of the unit and then her jewel, which again is, you'll see some similarities here. You may recognise the person again. In Lesson 3, students had an incursion with REMSEP scientist Nick Tran. Students learned how to make ice cream in a bag, observing how a liquid can change to a solid with a different effect of temperature. Students observed Nick creating instant ice cream with liquid nitrogen and freezing a water bottle. For extra fun, Nick showed students the effect of liquid nitrogen on a balloon, banana and flowers. Students also had the opportunity to explore how high temperatures can affect different substances through melting paraffin wax using test tubes and beakers. Lesson 3 in the Explore phase contained experiments the students really enjoyed. The lesson provided a first-hand look at the scientific process of substances changing state. The first experiment looked at how liquid nitrogen could instantly change a liquid to a solid by freezing the substance and changing its temperature. The second experiment allowed students to predict and observe the freezing process of a plastic bottle full of water using liquid nitrogen. Students were extremely engaged and excited to test their predictions and explore whether the bottle would also freeze and shatter. Using an incursion like this created an opportunity to extend students' learning through exploration. Students responded to this incursion with high levels of excitement and engagement. Using REMSET was an extremely valuable asset that strengthened my whole unit. This incursion motivated students and spiked their interest, which kept them engaged for the remainder lessons. Using REMSTEP was also a valuable learning tool for myself to experience and plan and conduct an incursion in a school environment. Okay, we'll save Yana and Olivia for a minute. So, in, in that case, REMSTEP was not just providing a scientist. Um, Nick certainly was giving fantastic PD in terms of science understandings and possibilities, but of course the equipment and ma materials that Nick brought along not normally available in a primary school, so it uh, made for a fantastic experience not just for our PST, but for um, the, the students at the school. Now that's, um, that's enough of Nick, I think. Now we should see David as a visiting scientist. 
and uh, that's the one with, with Jana and Olivia. Uh, this is just the dual section of their presentation. During the planning stages of MISTI, we were given the opportunity to get in contact with a working scientist from REMSTEP. We had a fantastic experience with this organisation as we were able to use their expertise to help us provide students with rich and engaging experiences. Making the effort to get involved with these types of programs or with local universities or expert community members enables teachers to expose students to complex concepts in an, in an authentic and meaningful way. Scientists from this program were able to provide us with the resource and knowledge to create beautiful borax crystals. The success of this experiment helped develop our confidence in conducting further experiments with the students. We highly encourage teachers to reach out further than just textbooks and truly engage with the wider community to provide better outcomes for students. That's the end of them. So, I, I like the way they're in their presentation. So that was that little PD component that they have in there in their forum presentation, that they really are talking not just about REMSTEP but the, the notion of using scientists and experts in the community in future as, as primary teachers. And uh, so I think that that's certainly broadening their view through REMSTEP of uh, what they can do in a primary school with science. And the richness and authentic and engaging um, nature of having in this case, David involved, uh, was, was fantastic. You may have noticed they were in a science centre at one point too. That was uh, funded by REMSTEP, so the excursion costs were also covered because most schools can't afford the excursion costs. Uh, anyway, enough of that. So that's, that, is, um, that is our MISTI and linking with REMSTEP. The first year, we thought, fantastic. Students are doing a unit on sustainability. Let's find a sustainability expert, hook them up with that. Students are doing something on astronomy, right, hook them up with an astronomer. And as a trial, it was very interesting because it became apparent that that's not what they need. Our pre-service teachers don't necessarily need an absolute expert because those experts don't have often the skills we need to bring them into a primary school. Like they're trying to function at their mega, mega publishing level and you know cutting edge, and weren't able in most cases to distill uh, at, at the appropriate level of the curriculum for primary children. And so we let go of that idea from 2014 of saying, right, here's your topic, let's find a, an expert in that field. And in 2015 and 2016, we went for the generic scientists instead. And that was then using a different skill set from these people, that they did understand children and the, the curriculum in the primary schools. And that um, an understanding of what our PSTs were doing really helped. So these generic people understanding the skills of science and having uh, the ability to draw on materials, resources and bring those along was a much, much more sex successful angle on the scientist. And so in a lot of cases it was David in 2015 and others, and in 2016 it was mainly Nick and a few others. But uh, that really helped. So I don't know that, um, I don't know whether that's good or not, but the absolute science experts that we tried to locate in 2014, certainly amongst that pool of five, uh, weren't as useful as we had thought. So, in terms of the future for, um, for MISTI, now that REM steps coming to an end, one good thing is the resources that were acquired exist and will be borrowable and, and usable into the future. So that's, that's one thing in terms of an ongoing uh, nature for MISTI. The other thing is the relationships that we have created between education and the science area of La Trobe. Has, is another thing that hopefully can continue. It was on a volunteer basis mainly over the last three years. And so if we can continue those relationships with pre-service teachers, with scientists uh, that we've already established through the funding of REMSTEP, then uh, hopefully 
things can continue without money. Uh, so, are there any questions, first of all, on Misty and what we did before I head into the trial that ran this year? Yeah, well, uh, the, the students uh, could have been doing any topic across the entire uh, science curriculum in primary school, and yet we would call on the, the one or two people that we had designated because, yes, they were skilled in science. Looks like David wants to say something about that. Well, actually, I do. Yeah, go ahead. initially, no offence David, thought that they were coming in and telling the kids everything that they needed to know. And yet our pre-service teachers had a very carefully crafted 5E unit and th there was a particular reason that that scientist was there. And if it was in the explore phase, they didn't want that scientist doing lots of telling. If it was in the uh, explain phase, they may have intentionally wanted the scientist for that purpose. So we realised that it had to be a two-way relationship where not just the scientists in their own head saying, I'm coming in and I'm doing this and this and this, but the pre-service teachers all of a sudden starting to say, well, that would be great, but could it be done in this way where you're asking questions instead of telling answers? And so it, it really depended on where in their 5Es they were using the incursion and for what purpose, but uh, our pre-service teachers were, were giving back to the scientists in, or feeding back in this two way of how they would like the uh, scientists to act, behave, um, and what sorts of things in terms of asking questions or telling answers. Does that make sense? So it, it's, uh, it was in one way quite empowering for the pre-service teachers to realise that they have a lot of knowledge about teaching and of teaching science that the scientists don't necessarily have. And you have to be very clear in the communication between the two as to uh, what because of the outcomes that you want to achieve with this incursion and the rest, the use of their equipment and the like. So, yeah, that, that was, that was a, and I think in that way, the pre-service teachers really do start to own the, their scientists in a way and, and what that scientist does, not like a performing monkey or anything, but um, that they, they do understand their purpose in the school. Let's move on.
leave Misty behind and just move on to the trial that we had this year. And this was uh, prompted by David saying, is there any other way you can use REM step scientists with a bigger group? And it happened upon, I bumped into a colleague who, uh, the Discovery Centre was going through some major problems and was looking at closing. And she wanted to get more pre-service teachers through the doors as a long-term way of getting teachers to, to know it's there and what you can do with it once they're out as practising teachers. So we thought that, well, we have 160 second years, so that's the entire primary cohort. Um, and in their first touch of science, teaching science, we had this rather mundane planner 5e unit and we, we would nominate a particular topic for, for groups and they would do it in teams of two. It, it uh, wasn't a major assignment, but um, when we realised we could spark things up a bit and pull Misty... It's 11 o'clock. Oh, sorry about that. That's my computer. Um, so, so it became a collaboration between uh, our pre-service teachers and Latrobe staff and science centre experts at Discovery. And so we were using their expertise as science centre experts, not necessarily just scientists. Um, and part of this was that our pre-service teachers had to run an excursion. Uh, basically, we had four schools signed up, about 50 classes in total. Our pre-service teachers were roughly in teams of three, if that makes any sense to you. And REMSTEP was funding the costs of entry to Discovery and of any transport costs. We did pick two schools within walking distance, although one rainy day stuffed that up. But um, the idea was that we were trying to reduce costs by having some closer schools. And so this, this mundane 5e unit plan then became a meaningful series of planning activities linked to a real class. So these teams of three pre-service teachers were allocated to a class in a primary school and needed to design the engaged material. So they started with the basis of the primary connections, um, the appropriate primary connections unit, but then had to revise it to come up with uh, more meaningful or adjust the engage activities. Actually, I'll just kick to the next slide for this. So in terms of the engage, the pre-service teachers had to modify and deliver the engage activity in the school, so with their teacher, so it was in a collaborative approach. They then had to plan with the teacher and the discovery staff based on the students' uh, understandings of the science topic and their experiences in it, a, the, an appropriate excursion with the discovery staff. So instead of just the discovery staff rolling out their usual grade two um, physics type activities, that it would be planned for that class. And that's where the pre-service teachers were the ones that brought the uh, prior knowledge of what the, pre what the children had in their class to the discovery staff and said, this is what they've done, this is what they've experienced, this is, these are their rough understandings. The teacher was then left to run. Uh, so the explore was where the excursion was. And the students, our pre-service teachers, I should say, had to help assist the discovery experts there and learnt from that. The teacher was left to their own devices with the explain, because they had the primary connections unit as a PDF anyway. And in the elaborate phase, our pre-service teachers had to uh, construct an integrated science and design and tech uh, lesson. And, and of course, in the elaborate phase, it's a very appropriate spot to bring in the design and tech part of the curriculum. So that was another task as a team of three that they had to modify. And the teacher was left to the evaluate phase, which hopefully they got to, David, as you were mentioning before. So there was one more point there. Oh, yeah, no, I said that. So the excursion to discovery was a major thing for both the school children, which is a payoff for all the schools involved, uh, but for our pre-service teachers to experience that and see how it can be meaningfully linked into a unit plan uh, was, was most worthwhile. So that's, that's the pilot that we ran this year. And I think I might just kick to a, um, a little snippet from a movie, which is right here.
Teaching science is a compulsory second year subject at La Trobe. We have an interface with the Discovery Centre here in Bendigo, as well as four local schools. What that gives us is another opportunity for our PSTs to interact with the Primary Connections material in an environment where it's more realistic. So it's in, in a classroom setting for engage phase, it's in a discovery for the explore phase, and then they also include a technology element in an elaborate phase activity as part of that assessment. The most crucial thing about planning this lesson was communication, um, and that would be communication with our university lecturer, making sure we knew what we needed to include in our lesson. Communication with the teacher at Quarry Hill Primary School so that we knew how the class runs. Brenton was very instrumental in doing that. They had one lead uh, designated communicator and so he emailed me back with an outline of what the team hoped to get done throughout the lesson and, and so the, he said is there any prior learning that has already happened and what would you like us to get out of it and I said well it's no prior learning has happened this year with regards to melting moments or that type of unit I'm happy to support you in what you need. So our lesson today was based around the melting moments of primary connections unit uh, in particular lesson one which is sunken shapes. So with that bit there, we're covering the difference of solids and liquids and how they melt and freeze. We opened the lesson with a scene from the movie Frozen. It was Olaf's song in summer and it was a good hook to draw similarities between what kids have already seen in their everyday life um, to the science topics that we were teaching in the lesson. What would you find in a puddle? Water. Yeah, and what is water? He's learning. That's right. Water's a liquid. So for the next minute or so, I want you guys to turn to the person next to you and discuss what a liquid is. So the engage phase is based on understanding the pre-existing knowledge. We use the butcher's paper or the poster paper and the discussion of the melt and freeze. We use those two as tools that enable the students to visually or orally describe what they previously knew. We made sure not to use language such as yes, no, that's incorrect, that is correct. We just want them to pretty much teach us what they know. Solid is something that's hard. And we'll stop there with that one. So I don't have much time left according to David, so let's just fly through this. Um, the, the four schools with 50 classes and pre-service teachers in teams of three, that, that model worked very well. And the activity itself uh, as, as an assessment piece was very successful for our pre-service teachers. I think um, I, I'm going to have to prune my movie snippet to finish in four minutes, but what we have created is, is a model that is going to be sustainable without REMSTEP. And the reason for that is that the Discovery Centre chases funding uh, from uh, organisations all over the place and many Bendigo ones that uh, like to donate to good ed educational things. And of course we ran this with low socioeconomic schools. And uh, so for next year we have organisations already willing to fund the buses and to fund the entry costs to Discovery independent of REMSTEP. So setting it up under REMSTEP has been a great kick to a program that will uh, grow into the future. So for us, um, that's, it's been a winner all, all around for our pre-service teachers. Of course, there's always disasters with the first, first run of a program and um, communication, as, as one girl mentions uh, soon, was, was essential and there were some communication issues when you've got the four-way discovery, school teachers, uh, pre-service teachers and Latrobe staff. So uh, we'll refine our communication models for next year to make sure everyone is kept in the loop a lot better than uh, what happened this year. That wasn't, that was our fault. Uh, didn't help that I was on extended sick leave for a while. But um, the, the model is going to work and, and uh, the pre-service teachers, I think it was a much more meaningful piece of assessment uh, and perhaps a little more like what we we had in, in the past. So what have we learned? Well, for regional pre-service teachers and other stakeholders such as the teachers in these rural schools and, and uh, 
the, the primary students and the scientists, I think, and, and Vaughan made me write mathematicians in there. We didn't really team much with mathematicians, uh, but of course REM step does have an M in there. Uh, but in our case, we're working more with just scientists. But these collaborative partnerships, the two that you've seen, have, have really worked for us. And the pre-service teacher experience really has been enriched through the use of the REM step. So MISTI was already an enriching experience, but even more with, with the notion of the scientists involved. Um, I've mentioned the skills and knowledge point already, so I don't need to go through that now. But the whole idea of shared understandings between teacher educators, pre-service teachers, the teachers and the scientists in the, in the second year program was one of the things that uh, was important. But really for MISTI students, that pre-service teacher-scientist relationship is one that we uh, have really now got a scaffold for our pre-service teachers so that they are asking questions back uh, to make sure that the scientist isn't just marching in with all of their equipment. So, challenges for everyone with this. Um, I just had one point to say on my challenges, which I can't see, don't you hate that? Oh, the, the highly fixed university curriculum meant working on modifying existing programs was much easier for us than trying to rewrite a program. Uh, so that, I'll leave it at that for now, but uh, yeah. Are there any other questions before I run away? Yes. Oh, well. It'll be run for the whole cohort again next year. For oh, sorry. So Misty is with third years. With with yeah, with Misty. Yeah. So they'll be rolling into Misty with I think a deeper understanding of of the five E model than they would have got with their existing um, assignment that they had. Um, so yes, they will roll into third year and have the opportunity if they wish and if it's appropriate with the unit that they're designing to link in with a scientist for perhaps an incursion or an excursion or other equipment. So that will still be there as an option based on our equipment list that's now built up with REMSTEP buying particular materials. And we have wonderful solar car resources now which we never had available before and many others. So anyway, does that answer that question? Yeah, thank you. No, it's only run for pre-service teachers. The interesting thing, though, it becomes a professional development session for the teachers, that, that in, yeah, the, school, the classrooms in which they go. And we find that MISTI is one of the programs where we never have a problem as soon as we put out the call for volunteer teachers and schools uh, to be part of the um, mentor ar arrangement. We sell out very quickly. And so uh, the teachers do see it as excellent PD because they, they get, often, often these units that the pre-service teachers write, maybe for one grade four class, and in the school there might be four grade four classes, it gets run across all classes. So, so the, the, the love is spread a lot in terms of the uh, professional development and the use of innovative ideas in science teaching, uh, or integrated unit really, science, design and tech and other things. Good question. Yes. I would say science works is the closest thing. Oh no, and, and Latrobe is independent of Discovery. So, yeah, Discovery is a, a uh, now it's a private organisation. Um, it was run by the council and they let it go adrift and it was nearly going to sink. But now we're, lots of people have kicked in with money and volunteerism and it's, it's running very well. So yeah, it, it is different. And because it's a private organisation, the state government funds country children to travel way past Discovery, all the way to Melbourne to go to the museum or to Science Works, because they're government in things, and they won't fund the, the equivalent for Discovery. So we have to get creative about other ways we can get children in. Bit sad. Uh, thank you for your time. <laughs>